Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, we are now in module number 6 and we are discussing sodium ion rechargeable cells and this is lecture number 27. In the last lecture, we talked about the positive electrode material, uh, the umbrella of uh, materials uh, for its use in sodium ion batteries and here uh, in this particular lecture, we will be talking about the negative electrodes and which basically includes carbonaceous materials, alloy based materials and some other significant uh, other materials. Uh, part of our own research also I will show which is pertinent to this lecture. Now, if you uh, uh, look at the type of the anodes, you will find very, very similarity, very much similarity of the lithium ion uh, batteries. Here also we will be talking about the carbonaceous material, but not the same type of anode like graphite, it has certain problem. We will discuss that, that uh, graphite you can, uh, cannot use as anode for sodium ion battery. Uh, certain alloys uh, we will be talking about conversion types of material and organic material. So, these are the anodes uh, for sodium ion battery. Uh, out of this carbonaceous material, they go for this intercalation mechanisms. Uh, only hard carbon, if you pick up any paper on sodium ion battery or any standard text from a monograph, you will find that they have only talked about hard carbon or expanded graphite, but less on alloy type of anodes or conversion types of anodes, organic anodes and uh, certain simple oxide material which is conversion type of anode like copper oxide that we have recently have done some work with promising results, I will just uh, touch uh, uh, to show that this also can be used for sodium ion battery. You can imagine it will be, it will be able to produce a very cheap battery, copper oxide is a very well known material and if you take Prussian blue for example, on the other side, a uh, reasonable good sodium ion battery for the renewable energy storage you can easily make using the same facility. Uh, that you use for coin cell or cylindrical cell or power cell, which already I have described part of my other lectures. Now, this anode material, uh, you can also in half cell con configuration, you can use uh, uh, sodium metal and you can calculate uh, its uh, estimate, its uh, capacity is about 1165 milli ampere hour per gram. But this sodium metal cannot be directly used as anode uh, because of the same problem uh, which is dendrite formation which is uh, much more aggravated in case of sodium uh, metal uh, if you use as anode. And this, this, uh, this is extremely um, reacts aggressively with the electrolyte and also it is low minting in case of if we abuse the battery, if there is a hot spot. Um, if the temperature is raised, it is having a low melting point which I already talked about 97.7 degree Celsius. That leads to safety problem. So, therefore, number of other materials they are investigated to find out the appropriate anode for sodium ion battery. So, here you can see we have a four class of material. One is carbonaceous material, you are familiar with it, alloy type of anodes you are also familiar with it when uh, you have studied the lithium based um, anode materials for lithium ion batteries. Organic material, uh, some of them they are useful and conversion type materials also you know. So, technology wise uh, this is more or less uh, similar type of uh, technology. So, as such uh, it is uh, not very problematic to adopt sodium ion uh, material to lithium ion batteries. Now, if you look at the required properties, uh, of course, it should have low molecular weight and low density and be able to reversibly accommodate large amount of sodium ions per formula unit to yield high volumetric and gravimetric capacity. 
So, that needs no explanation because uh, from the knowledge of lithium ion battery materials, you can appreciate that why it is so. It should possess a low potential to get a high working voltage. So, graphite you remember that works around 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 uh, volt versus lithium uh, plus by lithium this redox couple. Uh, and most of the uh, sodium ion uh, cathode material, positive material what you have seen, uh, this lies around 3.8 to 3.3 volt. So, you need to have an anode material which gives you the potential much lower, so that the voltage window is uh, at least 3 volt. So, you do not have any 5 volt sodium ion battery cathode material. Uh, so, that you will have to keep it in mind that uh, this potential should be low. It should not react or there should not be any dissolution tendency to the solvent with the electrolyte. That is also obvious you do not want to lose the active material uh, and thereby uh, reducing the capacity as the cycles go on. And of course, they should have both sodium ion uh, conductivity as well as electronic conductivity. So, for many of this material getting a good electronic conductivity is a challenge. So, that is one of the requirements that it should have good electronic and also ionic conductivity. So, carbonaceous material if you see the carbon based material is of course, the first choice because it is wide availability and we have the knowledge to use it for lithium ion batteries. So, the first choice should be graphite but it is a regular structure as you can see here and this spacing which is 3.3 angstrom this cannot accommodate this relatively larger sodium ion. So, sodium ion cannot actually intercalate that easily in graphite. So, that is one of the major problem. So, although this is uh, of our first choice because they possess low voltage against sodium and also chemically uh, and thermally stable. Uh, but as I said, this is not suitable anode as the discharge compound is not stable. So, that means, uh, when it is discharged that means, when sodium is coming inside the structure, then it is not stable. So, due to the absence of strong driving forces and mismatching interlayer distance 3.3 angstrom to the larger sodium ion radius which is 1.02 angstrom. So, it find it is difficult to go in. So, most of the sodium ions undergo a deposition over the graphite anode and you know the deposition is something that we do not need because the deposition is not a layer by layer deposition. It will form a dendrite structure, it will start to grow, it will have a floppy structure, part of it will be uh, disintegrated inside the electrolyte or if it starts to grow, it will puncture the uh, puncture your uh, separator and there will be short circuit. So, among other carbon materials, hard carbon and expanded graphite, they are useful. So, they are used as a node. So, in case of hard carbon, uh, you can see there is a curved graphene nano sheet. So, each single sheet is a graphene sheet. So, this is having a curved uh, graphene nano sheet and uh, the spacing is higher. So, it is from 3.7 to 4 angstrom which is larger than this and they are randomly distributed right and micro pores they form between this curved graphene domains. So, between this curved graphene domains there are micro pores uh, I will explain it later. So, you have uh, this color uh, you should follow. So, this is intercalating ions which are orange. This uh, uh, yellow one is the surface adsorbing ions. So, some of the sodium is also surface adsorbed on the graphene sheet and this blue kind of thing is a defect binding ions because it does not have a good crystal structure like this. So, there are a lot of defects here. So, in the defect uh, this sodium ion are bonded. Now, if it is very strongly bonded, it is very difficult to take it out and that will create problem. So, uh, one should be little bit careful about it. So, the mechanism of the uh, 
sodium storage in hot carbon, uh, this is a controversial mechanism. So, in a recent study, um, uh, whatever we could get or we, we could understand that sodium and intercalation start first with the adsorption. So, this blue you see that on this hard carbon layers they are just simply adsorbed right. It starts with absorption on defect sites here and subsequently through intercalation in expanded graphene sheets. So, here you see that there are four steps and depending on these four steps there is a change in the voltage regime. So, up to 0.2 volt adsorption of the surface defects adsorption of the ions on the surface or on the defects that takes place. Then the voltage is lowered 0.1. So, in 0.1 you can see that um, this uh, adsorption in micropores takes place. So, the micropore is in between this uh, graphene layer. So, this layer and this layer, this, this small space uh, here it intercalates. Number 3 is the intercalation between graphene sheets. So, here you can see that it is not really a single layer of graphene. So, at least if you consider 3 layers uh, contain uh, that uh, part. So, micropores uh, in case of micropores it goes inside this uh, in between space of this uh, thick graphene layer and then at lower potential intercalation between the graphene sheets that takes place. And finally, although it is not very um, well established yet, but some people they think that adsorption on micropores is also possible. It is not intercalation, but again this green kind of things they come back and they start to adsorb here. So, the color you follow, uh, this is uh, surface adsorbs on defect this is on micropores and this is intercalated inside the layers. So, the voltage is pretty low and this many things occur when this expanded sorry hard carbon they are actually sodiated. In case of expanded graph graphite you can see that this is the layer the space is not enough. So, sodium cannot be inter electrochemically intercalated into the graphite because of its small interlayer spacing. So, electrochemical intercalation of sodium can be possible if you change it to graphene oxide. So, when once it transforms from here to here, then space is little bit enlarged because of the oxidation. Now, this oxidation um, when it takes place the sodium ion insertion they are a bit limited because of the steric hindrance of large amount of oxygen containing groups. So, oxygen containing groups are here you see that this one uh, and uh, this one this blue one uh, this is uh, the oxygen containing group uh, O and H hydroxyl could be here. So, due to although this space is increased, but it cannot go in that easily because of the hindrance of this right. Then what do you do? You again do a reduced graphene oxide. So, once you reduce it then many of this uh, things are removed. So, then a significant amount of sodium can be intercalated into this expanded graphite expanded graphite is nothing but graphene oxide. Once it gets reduced, then its electronic conductivity also increases and apart from that significant amount of sodium can exactly be go in owing to the suitable interlayer distance and reduced oxygen containing groups in the interlayer. So, that is the concept of expanded graphite and this can be used as negative electrode material for sodium ion batteries. Then we will talk about this alloy type of materials. The same type of material like tin that also can be used here because you know that it forms an alloy with lithium 
it forms an alloy with sodium as well. So, whatever I have described that when alloying takes place depending on the phase diagram you will have to see that what kind of phases form and if there is a two phase mixture with the minimum free energy, the free energy remains same then the voltage will also be same. So, you will get a plateau which you need there is not a change in the voltage profile because of a single phase uh, solid solution type of uh, material of alloying. So, this is good the same thing happens here. So, you can see the capacity tint, antimony, phosphorus they yield higher capacity. In fact, from the capacity you can calculate that how much sodium is incorporated in these uh, metals uh, be that tin or so this antimony or phosphorus uh, and this capacity is much much larger than your hard carbon. Although uh, getting too much capacity is of no use because uh, you know that unless you can develop a cathode which is having a very high capacity it does not make sense to go beyond 1000 milli ampere hour per gram uh, because it will not give a good capacity in your full cell uh, full sodium ion cell. So, uh, you can limit yourself uh, you do not need this type of very high capacity for this. The average sodiation voltage that is also important you will have to keep it low and indeed they are low you see 0.4 volt for tin, 0.75 volt for antimony and 0.5 volt for phosphorus. So, I will prefer of course, tin here because this is having the lowest voltage. Challenge is same that you well know it is well known to you that large volumetric fluctuation takes place when sodiation and desodiation takes place and that leads to very rapid capacity fading. So, during sodiation uh, there is a volume expansion, crack can initiate, structural crack can disintegrate and these uh, things are uh, taken from our own research. So, after you see that it is a nicely coated uh, pristine electrode anode material and we were testing it uh, with sodium half cell. So, the copper substrate you can see you can see the copper substrate and you can see it is delaminated, delaminated the coating is here and the bare copper current collector is somewhere here. So, it is coming out. So, these problems remain. If you talk about conversion type of anode material, uh, it is not only metal oxides, but sulphides and selenides they are also potential candidate for sodium ion anodes. In this conversion types of anode upon fast discharge the virgin anode structure is completely destroyed you know that forming small metal nanoparticles which are embedded in sodium oxide in case of lithium it was lithium oxide. Now, apart from oxide you are taking sulphide. So, sodium sulphide, sodium selenides in that matrix you will have the small metal nanoparticle. Now, there are certain advantages. Uh, of uh, this uh, and you can see that um, theoretical capacity is relatively higher, rate performance is quite good, relatively low cost, easy to manufacture uh, because this uh, oxide sulphides they are easy to manufacture. So, certainly advantages are there, but challenges are also there large volumetric fluctuation leads to rapid capacity fading unstable ACI formation because you know in negative electrode ACI formation is required, but we do not want thicker ACI impervious to sodium ion um, diffusion through it and also it should not disintegrate to expose the fresh surface of the negative electrode material. So, that again ACI layer can form relatively higher nominal voltage that is another problem it is not as low as your hard carbon or expanded graphite and it is having lower electronic conductivity. So, you can compare among uh, various types of uh, uh, phosphate oxide sulf sulphide 
then fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, this material you can see and volume expansion you see that volume expansion is uh, very large here. right? Now, if you consider the voltage, you see the voltage here volume con contraction is very high, uh, but the voltage here is very low. Oxide is here, it is slightly lower than this and voltage is also going up. This material they have very nominal about uh, 50 percent, uh, I should not say it is nominal, it is quite large. Uh, but its voltage is very high. So, this, this kind of material uh, one cannot use it, it makes no sense unless you have a uh, 6 volt sodium and uh, cathode material developed. But you will have to be satisfied with sulphide, phosphides and oxides uh, with this kind of conversion material for this obvious reasons. So, this uh, I have already described and uh, this is just a recapitulation. So, on copper current collector you have this type of conversion uh, type of oxide or other types of material. Then what is happening in case of oxide it is sodium oxide and small metal particles are there. So, this metal particles uh, they also can uh, form oxide and uh, or they can directly form alloy. So, some of the metal nanoparticles due to this conversion reaction take further sodium ions for alloy formation, but it is not always the case. Not always this metal particle will form alloy. They can leave there if there are multiple metal um, particle which is being produced here, say one of them they will uh, get this sodiation and volume expansion takes place. The other one that will remain um, as a metal particle, so that can act as a buffer as I have explained that the stress can be used to move the dislocations and that will buffer this stress. So, the relation is uh, quite straightforward um, that uh, you can easily understand that what exactly is forming here. And in most of this conversion uh, sodium ion battery anode due to the formation of a thicker passivation layer at the earlier stage. So, this is quite thicker. Only the surface of the active material undergoes the conversion reaction, leaving most of the active material unreacted which ultimately results much less specific capacity. So, in order to uh, these things happen, you will have to complete this reactions, right. But if it is surface only uh, reaction, then most of the part will still remain like this, then it is of no use and that is one of the major problems for conversion type of uh, anode material. Uh, for sodium ion batteries. So, the approaches are uh, very similar to lithium ion battery. One is the engineering morphology, you go for the nano scale synthesis, you can have nano structured material, not a uh, solid uh, nanosphere, but a hollow sphere or tubular kind of thing, you can have a a uh, bristle kind of structure or you can have a hierarchical structure uh, to mitigate the volumetric expansion or you can uh, add carbonaceous material which acts as a buffer. So, here you can see it is encapsulated, it serves two purpose, one purpose is that it can buffer the stress and number two being conducting it will improve the rate performance individual particle can be coated with carbon. And third one is to do some kind of engineering when you are preparing the electrode material. In many cases, we have found that electrophoretic deposition is an excellent process of uh, deposition and you can see here uh, a very good quality electrode and uh, if you see this picture, uh, you can even bend it. Uh, uh, bent it uh, across a small pane. So, uh, the stress um, it can withstand that shows that between the 
current collector and the anode material there is a good addition. So, organic material as uh, um, sodium ion battery anode, they are organic composite also explored because of their low potential, low cost and abundant research. The reported organic materials they mainly include carboxylate based, biomolecular based and shift based compounds. Almost all of them they are plagued by first cycle coulombic efficiency that means, during discharge uh, you can have uh, uh, the discharge profile and this discharge profile after that the charge profile is <coughs> smaller in capacity as compared to the discharge profile that leads to poor coulombic efficiency. Reversible capacity is quite low less than 200 milli ampere hour per gram. Cyclability is not that good, rate performance is also not that good, but one thing you will have to remember that this organic material has just been introduced and there are lot of uh, scope for further research. So, one such material this carboxylate based disodium terephthalate, it is abbreviated as Na2TP that show a low insertion potential about 0.9 volt versus sodium redox couple and a redox uh, reversible capacity is uh, reasonably good to 50 milli ampere hour per gram not excellent, but uh, compa comparing uh, considering that the positive electrode capacity is around 100, 115. So, it is quite good. The working voltage is found to decrease by substitution of electron donor like amine, while electron withdrawing group like uh, nitrous oxide increase the redox potential relative to this. So, you have the provision to manipulate uh, uh, their composition and play with their insertion voltage according to your need. And uh, you can see that uh, around 300 uh, milli ampere hour per gram that kind of capacity you can get and uh, by changing uh, the composition and the high coulombic loss. Uh, the first discharge capacity and second discharge capacity there is some kind of problem probably because of the ACI layer formation which is almost unavoidable. So, Na 2 Ti 307 this is also an insertion types of anode and uh, um, uh, we have started working on this. So, it has a very low insertion potential that is why we picked it is 0.3 volt and this is con considered to be very attractive. So, this is having a monoclinic structure and uh, uh, unit cell consists of three linearly arranged double stacked H shared TiO6 octahedra that you can see here and this octahedra also simultaneously share the corners forming a so called zigzag pattern of uh, this structure. Each of this octahedra uh, there is a small tilt which is about 10 to 32 degree and this titanium and oxygen this bond length are significantly varied. So, due to this octahedral tilt and presence of common oxygen between this octahedra which is apparent from this structure, there are total 7 equivalent position for the oxygen and the structure usually have two different types of sodium ions and one sodium is coordinated with 9 oxygen and another sodium is coordinated with 7 oxygen. So, in spite of this fascinating electrochemical properties, I mean it should be, uh, electronic conductivity is very low for this material. So, as you can see in the first discharge, there is a plateau which is uh, at quite low voltage, uh, but there is a very huge fall in capacity within the second cycle. Uh, and uh, two sodium ion intercalation 
um, actually takes place and there is a concomitant reduction of uh, titanium 4 to titanium plus 3. So, this intercalation again when it takes place that triggers a structural phase transition in this material. So, it is quite complicated. So, this coulombic efficiency one should uh, actually tackle. So, that is attributed to decomposition of the electrolyte uh, that is possible on the surface of the anode. Irreversible sodium ion trapping either into the carbon black or in the surface defect. So, they are not coming out during uh, charging of the uh, during discharging of the batteries and insufficient deintercalation of sodium ion from the discharge product uh, which is now in a 4 Ti 307. So, this coulombic efficiency improve with repeated cycling you will see that here if you compare here then after second cycle the coulombic efficiency is quite good as compared to the first cycle the difference from here to here. Second cycle from here to here, but still capacitive fading is there. Then this electronic conductivity this originates due to the structural phase transition during sodium ion intercalation. So, surface modification is our weapon. So, we can uh, deposit a carbon coating here, conductive carbon. So, that basically uh, a porous carbon network as you can see here. So, this carbon network is quite porous and that facilitates the charge transfer of the surface of the anode in line to the uh, mitigating the problem. This is one of the solutions and also this carbon acts as a barrier to impede the side reaction with the electrolyte particularly at the low potential and it might retard electrolyte decomposition on the anode surface. So, as compared to the previous uh, plot whatever I showed uh, you can see here the bare one uh, there is a huge drop in capacity within 100 cycles, but once you coat it with carbon this is reasonably good. I, I will not say that it is fade free initial this large fading takes place because of the SEI formation, but then more or less it gets stabilized. This is a very cheap material copper oxide and this is very close to my heart. Uh, so, that uh, whether this copper oxide can be used and it is a conversion type of material. So, we can prepare it by hydrothermal method. I am not going into the integrate detail of this uh, metal organic framework structure which purposefully we did uh, for the betterment of the powder that we are getting, but we did uh, deposit it by electrophoretic deposition and you can see a porous layer uh, is formed out of these powders which were prepared by hydrothermal synthesis. Now, you can have uh, progressively this characterization. Uh, for example, during charge and discharge whatever is happening at different voltage stage, you can stop the measurement and do the x-ray diffraction and from the phase analysis you know exactly what are the phases that you are getting when it gets reduced and eventually get oxidized. So, this C V is important alternatively you can do differential capacity plot of your uh, discharge and charge profile to get a better about better idea about the voltage. So, based on this x-ray diffraction study and also uh, uh, the cyclic voltammetry we can have this discharge and charge uh, reactions what is going on at different voltages. So, I am leaving it on you to understand this. So, you know that it is not a direct conversion of sodium ion and copper right. So, you can have different phases here and we could identify this phase through the x-ray diffraction analysis. So, at which voltage what reaction is going on if you do this simple set of measurements C V this one and this one. 
then you can actually write these equations. So, try to redo it because you know that what are the phases that is being formed at different charge and discharge cycles. You can easily see that what are the voltage uh, uh, shows the signature of this reaction. So, only thing you will have to predict that what is exactly being formed. Now, if it is crystalline, it is very uh, easy for you to identify through x-ray diffraction, but if it is not crystalline, uh, then the, you know, that will make your life little bit complicated. So, finally, you see that uh, again this copper reacts with sodium to form copper 2 oxide and copper 2 oxide and sodium oxide they forms again back this CO. So, this is uh, a bit different types of mechanism uh, that you can see it is not directly forming any alloy. Uh, but it is uh, the oxide that is forming. I will, I will ask you to go through this reaction and try to understand from the CV plot. But eventually, uh, what you are seeing that uh, this uh, discharge capacity uh, is quite good up to 200 cycles uh, as compared to the other sodium ion data that we see. And uh, the Coulombic efficiency is also quite good. And if you compare this with your tape cast electrode, you see the it almost fade within 20 cycles. So, indeed this processing um, has a strong, strong influence on the electrochemical properties. The addition is very important because you know the uh, volumetric expansion etcetera is going on. So, you should have a very strong adherence between the current collector and the uh, active material of your anode. So, I would like you to um, uh, go through this book, which very recently uh, we have published and uh, uh, many new types of material uh, we have proposed along with that we have reviewed all the anode and cathode materials and also the electrolyte material, which I will cover in my next lecture. And uh, there are certain uh, publication, uh, that, so this book is important this uh, paper is important and uh, I think it is downloadable, you can try that. Uh, ap apart from our own paper, there are many other uh, carbonaceous material and other materials um, pertinent to uh, this type of uh, electroceramics that will be uh, quite interesting for you to study. And uh, this copper oxide, it is uh, quite good. So, uh, that uh, recently we also published. Uh, so, materials are quite new. So, in the textbook you will not find a um, very exhaustive uh, details about, uh, about this type of uh, material for sodium ion battery. And there is uh, to my best of my knowledge, there is only one company. Unlike there are several companies I, I talked about for lithium ion batteries, but there is only one company in UK, Faradian. Uh, so, I would like you to go through this, this their website that what exactly their news, what they are planning to do, what they have already achieved and uh, that will give you a fairly good idea about the technological aspect of sodium ion batteries. So, we have talked about uh, types of anode, carbonaceous material, alloy conversion type and organic. Carbonaceous material, it is intercalation type, we considered hard carbon and expanded graphite. Alloy type of anode, it is more or less same the features like lithium and battery. Conversion types of anode we have talked about. Organic anodes we have just touched and this two material as a case study, uh, very recently uh, we have done some work on these materials and I thought that I should share with you so that you can uh, from the knowledge that you are gaining through the lecture you can just uh, correlate that experimentally laboratory based research what exactly we are getting. Thank you for your attention.